After an accident left her with third-degree burns, she needed months of recovery time before she could go back to a regular life. She was discouraged to start living normally again until a doctor told her that it's never too late. Nonetheless, Corin's friends made sure she was still able to enjoy one of the most important dances of a teenager's life. Corin had a lot going for her. She was a well-liked sophomore in high school. She was a cheerleader cheering on the football team and enjoyed spending time with her friends. Life seemed to be going fine for the 15-year-old until one night changed everything. The tragedy took place when Corin was with friends in the Glendale Heights neighborhood. A sudden fire occurred that killed a dozen people and injured many others. It was shortly after 10 o'clock p.m. when neighbors reported hearing several loud pops and then a deafening boom. Emergency workers arrived on the scene shortly afterwards. The accident was allegedly caused by a mishandled can of oil. There was one of the boys attempted to put some gas on the fire to make it bigger, according to mother Ellen Backer, who talked with People magazine. It exploded and got all over the kids, and they were on fire. She sustained second and third degree burns on the top half of her body, mainly her hands and face, but also her neck. She was rushed to the burn unit at Loyola University Medical Center, where her understandably distressed mother soon arrived and learned how badly her daughter had been injured. I had no idea she would be in this much pain until she was being transported to the emergency room. It's every parent's worst nightmare, said Ellen. You don't want to see your kids hurt. Unfortunately, Ellen wasn't the only mother whose child sustained major injuries that night when flames went rocketing violently up into the air. It's thought that somewhere in the region of 10 children were hurt in the explosion, with around four sustaining serious injuries. One of the teenager's parents told LUGN-TV that one boy was burned over much of his body. Two girls will need facial reconstruction surgery, and one is in a coma with a breathing tube. The most seriously injured person in the explosion was Corin's friend Autumn Hamilton, who remains hospitalized. She also suffered paralysis due to a military training accident and PTSD due to her trauma during the explosion. In order to raise funds for her medical bills and self-care, GoFundMe pages were started for Corin and Autumn. The high school and surrounding community have been trying to support the students as well. Corin spent 13 days at the hospital, four of them in the ICU, before finally being allowed to leave. Although Corin survived, she had a lot of life left to live and a long journey ahead of her. With the help of her parents, she would have to continue the extensive and daunting process of helping her injuries to heal. Despite the face mask, the teenager still bears bruises all over their face, which will require regular changes of bandages. And just one day after her release from the hospital, Corin was supposed to be attending the Glenbarg East High School prom. Jonathan Ayala was friends with Corin and a senior at the school. He asked her to go to prom, but she had already said yes. She'd accepted, but now for obvious reasons it seemed that she wouldn't be able to go after all. However, Corin's friends wanted her to enjoy her prom, so the night arrived and in a surprise effort orchestrated by a bunch of her classmates, the side event was brought to Corin instead. On the night of the prom, her friends brought the party to the Backner household by decorating the basement to create a mini prom experience. Ayala was part of a task force that planned Corin's birthday party and made sure she would have a beautiful prom. He told me in the hospital that he was determined to bring prom to her, even if it was in the hospital, Corin's mother explained. Then when we came home, he asked if he could decorate the basement. Ayala had a lot of trust in her friends, and they were able to pull off the prank with no one noticing. Everyone was very surprised how well Ayala took it and thought Corin did too. The teenager just thought that some friends were stopping by before the dance to say hello and take pictures, but she got far more than she bargained for, and Corin was surprised and touched to find her basement decorated with lights. Corin's mom recalls that Ayala was willing to sacrifice his own prom night for love of Corin as he heals. She has the opportunity to still attend two more, but I don't know that another prom will ever be as special as this one was, Ellen said. A common location for teens to find fun, the basement turned dance hall is where they have some of their photos taken. They also took a few dances while with Corin before she was given her stitches. Corin had to hide her tears as she laid her head on Ayala's shoulder. She was just happy, Alan recalled. It made my heart happy. Corin felt much more optimistic after her friends showed their support. 
Having all my friends support it helps a lot. It takes my mind off things, she told ABC7 News, and she will need the continued support of those pals as her wounds heal. While Corin is expected to fully recover, doctors say it will take months and that the process can't be rushed. Corin attends speech therapy every week, according to an update on the GoFundMe page for her medical treatment. The sessions are teaching her how to massage the skin around her mouth as it continues to heal. Thankfully, the bandages have been removed from Corin's hands, and she's making progress slowly but surely. Corin is lucky to be further along in her recovery than many other burn victims. Autumn Hamilton sustained third-degree burns over most of her body and remains in critical care, although she too is making remarkable strides. Perhaps most importantly, she has been taken off of her ventilator and is now breathing on her own. Autumn's sedatives have also been lowered, allowing her to actively participate in her physical therapy. She is alert and aware for longer periods of time now, can nod yes and no to questions and is determined to work hard to get better. The process is slow, but thankfully both Autumn and Corin have a great group of friends to support them as they recover.